Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. It's been about a month since I posted a teaser picture on my Instagram, so it's time for me to get outside and actually do my full review on the EZV bow hunting site. So before we jump into the actual how-to and that side of the review and me shooting all that stuff, let me give you my actual impressions of this site. So first and foremost, I'm not gonna lie, and I've told this to Aaron, uh, Aaron Lasco, the owner of EZV on the phone, I wanted to hate this thing, I'm not gonna lie. I've been a pin shooter my entire life, I haven't shot anything else, but hunting pins and I have had my bouts with target panic in the past and unless it's a real high stress situation like a tournament with money on the line I haven't really had target panic and so when I saw this and, and I saw the V and you're judging based on the animals uh, vital area I'm like it's a bunch of crap stadiometric ranging sounds good for tanks and doorways and that sort of stuff but for deer does it really make all that much of a sense can I actually shoot just as well as I do with my pin setup so I'm not going to lie I I am just as accurate shooting at spots or 3D targets with this than I am with my pin setup. And that has blown my mind. And I'm not just saying that. I genuinely pulled this thing out of the box, got it set up in less than 10 minutes, and was shooting groups two to three inches in diameter at 30 and 40 yards, which is insane for something that's completely different, completely, totally different side picture than what I was running already with my regular pin setup. Also, something I had never seen until I went to the ATA show here in 2020 and actually handle these for the first time. This whole thing is milled aluminum. I believe it's 6061 and it is tough as nails. It looks plastic, it looks cheap, but with the exception of the polymer or whatever type of uh, plastic insert it is, and by the way, incredibly tough. I'll put a uh, link to the video I did at ATA where they have a dumbbell hanging off of just the insert here, pretty impressive. The whole thing is built so ruggedly and so rigidly. I thought there were some plastic parts in here. It's not. The whole thing's metal with the exception of the bubble and the disc, but those are pretty much almost crush proof. You would really have to drop this right onto the face, which is not going to happen. And your pins would definitely do way worse, I think, than this would. Because this, you can push in and out and pop in and out in order to change feet per second. We'll get to that later. But if you were to drop your pins straight down, they're going to get crushed. And I think this thing would definitely be able to withstand that. The sight for definitely sure. No polymer, it's all metal. Another thing that I was really skeptical about because I kind of like higher end sights is I like having a first, second, and third axis and I really thought I would need that with this sight and I just haven't. The bubble has been perfect going down for downhill shots and up for uphill shots. I have not had to deal with a third axis issue which is pretty slick. Um, I usually have to deal with a third axis issue with my bows, just the way I grip and so on and so forth. I have not had that issue with this sight which for me and someone who's really picky about their accessories this was a real big bonus for me. So lastly, the learning curve of the sight picture. Now this is going to vary from, from person to person. It's going to be different from person to person. For me, I took to it like a fish to water. It opened up my sight picture and I just had so much clarity from the first time I drew back the bow. Yeah, it was a little bit weird getting used to seeing that V and moving that up with the paper target, which we'll get here to in a second. But opening up to that V was enormous. And let me explain why. So I really love the clarity of a single pin sight. Just one pin inside the housing. I pull up, I center the center of the pin inside the housing, inside my peep, and I'm able to execute a real clean shot. So I shoot a single pin for indoor spots throughout the winter time. This is what I compete with. This is a GWS AR19 if you're curious. It's been a great sight and I love that single pin clarity. But I shoot a slow bow. I shoot heavy arrows, uh, you know, well over the 475, well over 500 grains in most cases. And I don't shoot a super fast bow. My hunting bow is an Elite Energy 35. I also shoot my Victory 39, for also from Elite. And they're just not fast bows. The IBO in the low 320s. And so when you get a 500 plus green arrow, you got a lot of arc. And so shooting a single pin, you might have a 20 yard, but you're going to have to move that pin for that 25 yard, definitely that 30 yard shot, which is my comfortable range. I'm a fumble fingers when it comes to being in the woods and if I have to look at a deer range the deer or maybe guesstimate or actually pull up a range finder then I got to move this slider then the deer moves again I got to move it again I don't want to deal with that so I shoot a multiple pin sight for hunting even though I like really love the clarity of a single pin because it's just so open in the housing I can see all of what I want to hit and I can put my pin exactly right on that finite spot on that white tail so to give me the best clarity possible but also shoot multiple pins so I 
don't have to move my sight to range it, I shoot a Trophy Ridge V5 sight. Now this is currently in my wife's bow. She's going to shoot it for 3D this summer and then I'll steal it back for hunting season this fall. But I really like this open sight picture. I have all my pins stacked vertically instead. This is basically what the Easy V is doing except it's even eliminating all that stuff in the middle and it's giving you a clean, almost an instinctive sight picture for you. Those of you that shoot trad might understand that. Then a sense of that, those pins bouncing back and forth on that particular spot that I want to hit. I have a V that moves around the area when I hit and my eye for me just really focuses on that particular spot and the V just takes place. Now this is going to be different from archer to archer but for me like I said earlier I took to this like a fish to water and I've shot a lot of different boats a lot of different sites I've been shooting archery for a decade and a half and then some so I've been sh pretty comfortable shooting for a while and if you're new to archery it might take you a few minutes <laughs> to get used to that V if you particularly if you've seen pins a lot but for me with this open sight picture and switching over to that V I was able to have a really clear sight picture that my eyes and my brain just really love all right so let's actually get in to the how-to tutorial of this site and how super easy it was for me to get started and hit the ground running and be able to start shooting those groups so quickly. So first off, the site works on the concept of stadiometric ranging, which is way too much math for me to understand. But basically the idea is if you know the object of a known size, you know, let's say it's a tank and it's using that, that particular size of that tank or a sniper using a doorway, or in this case, the size of the vitals on a whitetail. The idea is, as we know, that the further something gets away, the smaller smaller it appears and the closer it gets to us the bigger it appears and so if you know the feet per second of your projectile you're able to basically estimate how far that thing is away using that V so the closer it is the wider it's going to be and the further away it is the smaller it's going to be so based on the feet per second of your bow you can use the V to go up and down and actually range the animal or at least that's the concept now easy V also has tick marks in here for your 20 30 40 50 60 so if you want to shoot it more like a pin sight, but with that real open V, which is what I've started to do more than anything else, if you really want to shoot it that way, you can pick out spots on a face of a target, and you don't necessarily have to line up that exact size of that vital zone of a whitetail or other big game species. So since I've already set up this sight and played around with it a lot, I have all the packaging pulled apart here, but this would be the back plate. So you can actually see how this would be sized up in the animal's vital area, whether it's facing you, quartering away, according towards or full broadside and the concept is still supposed to work putting it right in the center of the vitals now the way this works is that they give you multiple discs all the way down from 240 feet a second to 320 feet per second depending on the arrow weight and the IVO speed draw length and all that stuff of your particular setup so as you can see it has all the discs here inside the package right now I have the current speed for my bow set up already inside the side housing we'll get to that here in a second but as you can see See, I'll grab one for a really fast bow and I'll grab one for a really slow bow. As you can see, the V's get significantly wider towards the top and significantly thicker towards the bottom depending on the speed of your bow. So this one here in my left hand is for a 310 feet per second bow and this one in my right hand is for a 260 feet per second bow. So the faster your bow is, the closer that deer can be in that same range. Whereas obviously because you have a greater arc and a greater distance to shoot, you're going to get a much wider wider V uh, that stays wider as it goes down through the entire length of the V for that slower setup. Right now I'm shooting at 270 feet a second and I'll show you how I calculated all that and how I picked the right insert for my setup. So on the back of each insert it's molded into the V 260, 250, 300, whatever the feet per second of your bow is or very close to it. So mine is technically going at 272 feet a second so I'm using the 270 and unless you have a chronograph the best thing you can do is to go online. I just went onto an online archery calculator. I'll put the link in the description below. I put in the IBO speed, my actual draw length, peak weight, and my arrow speed, or my arrow weight, excuse me, and then how much weight is on the string, which I just use about 10 grains for the D loop and the peep. If you have string silencers on there, you might have to add a little bit more, and then it churns out a number. In this case, it's like 272.5. So I went with the 270 feet per second insert. Now, 
whole list of instructions here that are inside the package when you open it up. You have the mounting, the EZV site, we'll get to that here in a second. But also on the other side is for the insert sizing, if you already are shooting a multi-pin site, you can take that site with your pin gaps that are already set up and literally place it over and figure out which insert you needed. So unfortunately, I was only shooting a single pin, which I'll talk about here in a second. There's a single pin way you can do it, but if you're shooting a multi-pin, I just take the site right off my bow and I place it over and as these little dots line up to my pins I know that is going to be the best insert for me so this will work if you have a two pin a three pin four pin five pin or even a seven pin sight you'll be able to figure out which insert fits best for your setup for a single pin sight and since I don't shoot a single pin sight for hunting I did not do this method because my single pin is just used for 20 yards indoors I'll put a link to Aaron's video that he does very good in-depth tutorial about how he finds his single pin sight set up uh, so that way if you are that type of person that shoots one for the whitetails here on the east coast or if you're out west and you're hunting mule deer at the 70 80 yards with a bow and arrow you can best figure out that setup for you using a single pin sight also included in the package is this sighting in target which is trying to replicate as best it can the size of a whitetails vitals as you can see i've done a lot of shots with it but one thing i want to note uh, make note of before i actually get to putting this onto a target and shooting is you'll notice that all of my arrows are in a vertical spread. They're not in a left-right spread. And this was something I was really concerned about. When you go to this V and you have all this extra space on either side, am I going to get a lot of left-right misses? And in this case, when I first sighted in, and now the more that I've shot it and gotten used to it, I haven't had a whole bunch of left-right misses. And so now that I've kind of figured out my insert and I've actually gotten myself accustomed to seeing the V, I've been able to be much more accurate. But like I said, I was really worried about those left-right misses because that V is so open and it's not a specific pin on a specific spot but as you can see with my first you know 20 shots or whatever that was not an issue so first mounting the sight to the bow I just went off of the general area for where my original single pin was and how I wanted to space it there are three bolts on this obviously or three mounting ports on this obviously you have the two that mount to the riser you have two locations if you want to move it back or if you want to move it further away depending on the size of your peak after I've done all the adjusting to get it kind of roughly in the height I wanted I then use this set screw to get this so that way the housing is pretty close to parallel with the front of the riser so that way it sits square on my eye and this is something different than you would usually have with a sight because most of the gang adjustments obviously on a multi or single pin sight move the housing parallel with the riser they will not actually twist but if I was just to loosen this set screw and move this sight up and down this housing would actually sit at an angle away from the riser in one way or the other so you do have to release that but that took seconds very impressed and it has not moved like I said this all aluminum uh, construction does not move has a good bite to it and does not rotate even when it's fallen over here in the wind just like it is today one last thing that I forgot to mention about the housing itself I love the size of the bubble on this housing I don't like housings that have a really long or really tall bubble uh, bubble level system this one's nice and small it's not too small that you can't see it but it's small enough that I don't have to really start canting the bow one way or the other to get that bubble to slide level and I'm used to shooting with a level bow because I shoot year round I've been shooting for a long time but I like having a smaller size bubble in here and it doesn't cloud up your sight picture like sometimes it does uh, with other sights and also it's inside the si uh, sight ring the problem I have with that vertical stack trophy ridge sight is that the bubble sits outside of the actual housing and you can't get it in your peak very easily so having that smaller bubble and sitting inside the ring it makes for a really nice clear and open sight picture. Now you can't shoot this sight for anything other than bow hunting. Uh, no organization is going to let you shoot it in a tournament legally uh, because technically it can range the animal uh, and so for unknown 3D it is not a legal uh, sight to use that for but it's perfectly fine for bow hunting and I just kind of want to play around with it and see what kind of uh, accuracy I can get out of it with my 3D setup. So I have it set up at 20 yards but I'm not going to start here at 20 yards. We never want to start a brand new sight off at 20 yards. I have my rest and I've done all the tuning uh, already before, but I definitely want to make sure that my arrow is going to be uh, okay to not like fly four feet over the target. And that looks to be pretty darn close right down the center of the east, so we're going to start there. And we're going to go up to about 10 feet, 12 feet, shoot, just make sure that we're not grossly left, right, off, or up and down. And then we'll start working our way back so we can officially sight it in at 20 yards. All right, so right now we're about 12, 15 feet. I'm just going to line up those top tick marks right here. 
take a shot and see where we sit. All right, so I definitely hit left, so I think I'm gonna have to move the sight over to the left. We can step back a little bit more. The height at 20, it looks like I'm gonna be low, so I might have to move it down a little bit when we actually get back to that distance. So let's just uh, pick up the camera, move everything back, and we'll be ready to go for another shot. We're at a laser verified 20 yards, so I know that I'm left and I might be a little bit low. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this. So I'm just gonna take up my Allen key and I know it's just gonna operate just like any other pin sight. So if my arrow's impacting to the left, I need to move my rest, or my sight rather, to the left. And if I'm impacting low, I need to move my sight down. So very simple. And another unique thing about this sight, other than, uh, than any other sight that I've ever had to uh, work with before, is that all of the screws, both the mounting screw, this screw here, and the head adjustment screw are all the same Allen key size, uh, which is something unique. You don't see that on a lot of different uh, uh, sites. So I'm just gonna loosen that a little bit. Just gonna move this down. Don't really know, I'm just kinda eyeballing it, knowing what I know just of pin sights. And now as you can see, because I moved that down, you can now see that the head of the rest is sitting at an angle. So I'm gonna to have to make sure that's as close to parallel to the riser here once I move it out to the left a little bit. And uh, all of this, uh, par this bar here, the mounting bar for the actual head of the riser, or of the uh, sight rather, um, it is all uh, engraved. So there are lines, witness lines here that you can go off of so that way when you move left and right, you don't have to make a Sharpie or a pencil line, you know exactly where you are. We can always fine tune later. So I'm not gonna crank these down too far yet. We'll get some uh, arrows down range here. So at 20 yards, I'm gonna take that top portion of the V, I'm gonna take my top two tick marks, and I'm going to line them up on the outside where the two indented arrows there are on the target. And we're gonna execute a shot and see what we got. Yep, we had a group up there. High, and we're a little bit left still, so Gonna move this. Again, as you can see, now the housing of the site's at an angle, so I'll have to make that adjustment. All right, so we got the adjustments in, and now we can execute another shot and see if we are any closer to the center. Right with the, right with the first one there, so once again, another movement, and you'll get used to it. I mean, it's no different than shooting any other type of site, getting yourself adjusted in here. Another adjustment, another group. There we go, we're getting it dialed in now. Yep, I'm still just a skosh to the left. Just a skosh. Find the best way to set this up is to get that left right going, and then just set that screw a little bit, then get your rotation of your head right, and then tighten it down the rest of the way. All right, so I think we're gonna be golden now. We'll shoot another two arrow group here at 20, then we'll step back to 30, and we're gonna continue to use the V and the tick marks to line it up with the outside of that black ring. Yeah, we're still a touch left. And this, if I will say, is the only bugger about this sight, is because I'm a spoiled little brat when it comes to a lot of archery equipment, I really like toolless, Adjustments, super easy stuff. Doing the old, doing the old uh, loose and tap over. Haven't done that in a long time. There it is. All right, let's take the camera down and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here's where I started up here in the upper left. These were my first two shots, and I moved it way too much. Like I said, sometimes it takes a little bit getting used to, and I moved it way too far down and way too far to the right, so we ended up down here. Then I moved it up and back to the left, and I ended up shooting a couple shots just off here in this black region. This was my first shot of this last group here, the second shot, then I moved it a little bit, and here was that third shot, dead nuts, right there in the center. So we're gonna step back to 30, still use our corners here of the target, and see if that stadiometric ranging is gonna work for us. All right, 30 on the dot. So we're just gonna go up the V, we're gonna use those tick marks. Some guys like to flip it, the uh, disc around, like Troy Fowler, the Ranch Ferry. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below if you're not already familiar with him. Uh, he likes to shoot it with the disc flipped around. He does some other modifications to it. Like I said earlier, I'm kind of that pin shooter guy, so I like having those tick marks as a reference point, but that open sight picture is just so clean, uh, which is something I thought I would really take a long time getting used to. But anyhow, 
enough of me flapping my gums. Let's shoot it here at 30 and let's see what kind of group we have. And if we don't have the gaps after shooting a couple of groups, we might have to change discs. I think we're gonna be right on though based on that archery online calculator. So let's take a couple. That is money. <laughs> It really helps to start with a well-tuned arrow. That's true of any sight, but that thing flew like a dart and it is right there in the sweet spot. Push that one maybe a touch high. We'll see if we can put one down in here and not hit the other two arrows. That's right in there too. Let's go down and take a look at that group here at 30. All right, so here we are at 30. We have our first shot, our second shot, and the bottom one was our third. We were able to thread that needle in there. So at 30 yards, I say we are doing really well. Let's step back to 40, which is the maximum distance I can get safely here in my little neighborhood, and we'll see if that range continues to stay constant. All right, so here we are at the max distance of 40. You can say hello to my wife's car there in the background. Shooting parallel to the house here. This is as close as I can get to the road without the neighbors looking at me too weird. Uh, but here we are at 40 yards. We're just going to, again, move up to that third tick mark. And our left right seems really good so far. Uh, and for a hunting site and for a hunting situation, I don't shoot past 40 yards. Uh, I really don't shoot past 30 yards. That's really my ethical distance. Uh, there are a lot of factors in the woods. Of course, the animal moving and dropping and all that sort of stuff. So I really personally just don't shoot past 30 yards. Uh, so those first two tick marks are where I'm going to uh, call home for most of the time. Uh, this particular one has 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Uh, and if I ever got to a range where I could try that out, I would love to give it a whirl. Uh, but we're going to shoot here, group at 40. Hopefully the wind uh, doesn't kick us too bad. we got 15, 20 mile an hour gusts today. Hopefully we can thread a needle down there. And uh, then we're going to shoot at some spots. And I want to talk about how I can shoot it for spots and keep that practicing and not have to continuously shoot at this uh, big black circle here in my yard. Little bit low. That's my fault. Still would have been a very lethal shot. That one's right in the money. Right in the money. Just a touch low, maybe. Nope, that's right in the money as well. Let's go take a look at this group. All right, we have the bottom one here was the first shot. Just a skosh low, maybe an inch low there at 40. This is still a pretty good group. I can fit my whole hand around it. I mean, we're talking maybe a two and a half inch group, three at the most. I really think it's closer to two and a half here at 40 yards. This is my second shot. And then this guy right there, dead nuts, was my last shot. So I would say well out to 40 yards. This is an incredibly viable situation, an incredibly viable site to shoot groups this accurate, even in today's 15, 20 mile an hour wind. So let's talk for a second about how I still use this site to shoot spots, even though it's designed to be shot at that big black circle, which actually is about the size of all five of these dots combined. So how am I able to get a nice solid group, a tight group around a spot that's only, you know, in this case, two and a half, three inches wide. I would just simply use those tick marks and line them up and put this in the center. Now, even though that V is quite large, it pretty much covers, like I said, from edge to edge here of these five spots, my eye, and probably yours as well, really likes to center this in the housing. In the side housing, this dot or this dot or even the small one up here will still get centered in the housing and the V just takes care of the rest. I just use the tick marks on the outside, kind of bounce them around here, make sure left is right and execute a clean shot so let's get actual groups here and we'll just step back to some random distances in the yard and show you what I'm talking about all right so here we are just out here in the yard we're at an average distance I'm gonna say we're maybe around 20 just a skosh over here I'll just range it with the laser just to make sure yeah we're just a skosh here about 21 22 yards so I'm just gonna move that tick mark up just to the top of the dot, center the dot within the side housing, and just shoot a group and let's see what we got. Hopefully I don't break any arrows. I'm just gonna try to shoot two arrows if I can uh, swing them in there. We're gonna go for the bottom left dot. And that one's right in there as well. So let's step back to a different distance. We'll shoot at a super small dot, even at a little bit over 30 yards. Maybe we'll try like 35 and we'll see if we can still keep a consistent group. All right, so we're back here at 33 yards, so we're definitely in the middle between two tick marks here. We shoot at the smallest dot. Now, even though it's the smallest dot, because the sight picture is so open, and I shoot a, a 19 thousandths pin usually, that's what I use for my hunting system, and at, night, at 19 thousandths pin here at 30 some yards, it completely covers up that one and a half, or I think it's a two inch dot up there, completely covers it up and blurs it out. So I'm really not getting that super finite accuracy, in particular on a bright sunny day when I might get a little bit of starbursting out of my pin. Whereas today, even with this high wind, hopefully 
Ooh, that evergreen tree is going. Hopefully we can still keep a consistent group down there, even on that small dot with such a wide V at this distance. Just a little bit right. Arrows are doing all kinds of funky things with this wind today. I think they're both still very accurately in the target. Let's go down there and take a look. So our bottom dot down here can still fit two fingers around this group very easily. This was at 22 yards. And then up here, we even have, it's almost tighter. Uh, this was at 33 yards at this much smaller, about a two inch dot. Maybe this is a two and a half, three inch dot down here. Very, very accurate still. Now, is it still the same level of accuracy that I would expect with pins? Yes and no. Like I said, even at that long distance, because of the size pin that I use, it ends up covering this whole dot and then some. And at 22 yards, it covers up the vast majority of this one as well. Now, I don't shoot this site exclusively because I shoot 3D, I shoot indoor, where that site is not legal to be used. So I have to shoot it only for bow hunting situations. So I don't practice with it that much here in the month of February and March. Where I get closer to bow hunting season, you know, July, June, August, that sort of stuff, I will definitely be using it a lot. Lot more really think it's a very viable sight option and particularly if you're used to or if you have target panic and if you really want that open sight picture as you can see incredibly accurate with the hunting setup think this is a very viable option these are incredibly good groups for something that I don't get that much practice with so all in all really am impressed like I said at the beginning of the video I wanted to hate this thing the first time I pulled it out of the package I thought there's no way that's going to work you can't actually put your pin on what you want to aim at you got this V bouncing around what's this all about quite frankly it has worked and the proof is in the pudding the accuracy is there the groups are there I in particular think that if you struggle with target panic and you're not used to having that pin on something you want to hit you like that more open sight picture I would definitely give this site a try if you don't like it well I don't think you're putting as much effort into it as you would if it converts a die-hard pin shooter like me it'll probably work for you too so that's all for this video. If you have any other questions about the EZV site, I'll put the website to Aaron's EZV site down below. You can always leave a comment here on YouTube for me. You can always hit me up on Facebook and Instagram. My email's even down in the description if you want that more personal touch. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, definitely archery hunting if you so choose. Of course, enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.